Okay, 10.3 is all about using permutations and combinations. Please remember, um, before we even get started, that this is a no cell phone class. So if you have your phones out, let's put them away, please. Thank you. They're distracting to you, they're distracting to me. So we have learned how to do counting. This is kind of what this whole chapter is, is about counting. And that sounds weird because you're in college and you know how to count. But it's like basically how do we regroup things? And we learned about factorials last time where that really helps us to determine like the number of possible license plates, the number of possible sonic drinks, all that kind of good stuff. And so today we're going to learn about two different kinds of counting systems, if you would, or ways to help us count, known as permutations and combinations. And there's two different formulas for these. Um, they're not bad. They deal with factorials. So if you needed more practice with factorials, you'll get that today. And we're going to be looking at how we're going to be taking different subgroups, as you would, of a main group. That's one way to think about it. So again, we're going to deal with our club in. We deal with them quite a bit. We're going to deal with them with permutations to start with. Remember from previous sections that club in has Alan, Bill, Kathy, David, and Evelyn, or A, B, C, D, E, and we're going to consider two different questions. Now, one thing I want to remind you of and warn you of or caution you of is just because we're in permutations and combinations doesn't mean that we're not still going to use our other systems that we've learned previously. We will still be using, um, what was it called that we used? The fundamental counting principle. We're still going to be using that, but we're going to use that a little bit less because now we have permutations and combinations that are going to make our lives a little bit simpler. And we're going to see that play out here in a minute. But we will start first with doing our fundamental counting principle. So here's what we're going to do first. How many ways can all the club members be arranged or arrange themselves in a row for a photograph? We talked about this last time. We had, you know, I don't remember what teacher's name. The teacher lined up all of her 13 little toddlers, you know, to go to the park or whatever. Or you were arranging English essays was another example. So here we're going to take all of these club members and we're going to arrange them in a row for a photograph. The order doesn't matter. But the important thing is, is that we start with five group members. So there's going to be five spots. And because you can't split a person in parts, if somebody is in this first spot, we have five different choices here. It could be Alan, Bill, Kathy, David, or Evelyn. But then in the next spot, we only have four choices because we can't take Bill here and stick him here as well. So every time we move down the line, we get one less choice. This is how we actually get our factorials. Because in order to figure out how many ways we would be multiplying our possibilities, and this is the definition of 5 factorial. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which means there's 120 ways we can arrange these five group members for a photograph. And what the fundamental counting principle allowed us to do is we could figure out how many ways without having to list all those, which was really nice. Because back in 10.1, we just had to list them. And I told you that if I give you any problems where you actually have to physically list all the possibilities, they will be relatively small. I would never make you list 120 different ways. That just gets very tedious. So now we're going to look at the, the same club, same five members, selecting a president, a secretary, and a treasurer if no one can hold more than one office. Everybody is available to be either president, secretary, or treasurer, so there's no limitations on who can be what. But we do have three different positions. We have the president, the secretary, and the treasurer. And if you're president, you can't be the secretary or the treasurer. We have to distribute our powers. So if we start with the president, then there's five choices for them. Then we go to secretary, there's four choices. Then we go to treasurer, there's three choices. Because every time we lose one member because somebody has taken the spot previous. Five times four times three means that there's 60 different ways from this group of five people 
we could elect these three positions. Now these first two problems, hopefully they're not anything new because they're literally the same style of problems we encountered back in 10-2 uh, with our fundamental counting principle. We've used our fundamental counting principle for these. So now we're going to start thinking about these in a slightly different way. Instead of how many ways can this club select or elect a president, secretary, and treasurer, another way this could have been asked is how many arrangements are there of five things or these five people if you take three of them at a time? And that may be a really weird way to think about it. So thinking of arranging people like that when you're pulling three at a time, think about lining up five people at the front of the classroom. And if you line up five people at the front of the classroom and then you have three people step forward at the same time, that's what we're saying. How many different ways could we have three people step forward? And based on what we just learned, there's going to be 60 ways. You know, the first three people could step forward, then the first two could step forward with, with each remaining person, and so on and so forth. We could go through it and exhaust it. But that's what we're asking, and that's actually how permutations work. Permutations are just arrangements. And our symbol for permutations, we have a little n, a big P, and a little r. A permutation, or the number of permutations of indistinct things taken r at a time, is denoted by this. We have n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, all the way until we have n minus n minus 1, or excuse me, r minus 1. This seems a little bit weird, but here's what it looks like. I'm going to go back up to the president one that we just did. Because we had five people, and we had three people step forward at a time. So that means our n was five, and our r was three. So based on this formula for per permutations, it would be 5p3. Well, our n is five, and then we'd have five minus one, and then we'd have five minus two, and that would go until we hit 5 minus, and then our r was 3 minus 1. But what's 3 minus 1? 2. So it's just going to 5 minus 2. Well, look what this is. 5 minus 1 is 4. 5 minus 2 is 3. It's exactly what we did. It's just another way of thinking of it. So same answer, we still get 60 ways, different process. When we use factorials, we get a slightly different formula. All three of these ways give us the exact same answer. This formula is the one that I use more times than not. So you have n total items that you're going to take r at a time. So we had five people, we're having three step forward at a time. One way that an, uh, Dr. Boswell says it is we have, like on that one, we had five P3. So we had five people, we're going to have three come forward at a time. So we're going to start like we're doing a factorial where we go five, and then we multiply back three times. We had 5 times 4 times 3. That's three spaces. We went three spaces back on our factorial. If it was 5p4, we would go four spaces back on our factorial. So that's one way to remember it. But we're going to do some problems, and I'm going to show you how algebraically this holds up and how it's going to look. So that 4p2... We might say that that's the number, that's a permutation, but the way we actually read 4P2 is it's the number of permutations of four distinct objects or four distinct things taken two at a time. The total number of things or objects will be listed first, and then the grouping or the arrangement of them will be listed second. So NPR equals N factorial over N minus R factorial.
And that's how we're going to find these different arrangements, the number of things. And some of these, they're not word problems. They're just calculations. So 4P2 is the different ways we can group four items by pulling two out at a time. So using that formula with the factorial, we would have 4 factorial over 4 minus 2 factorial. That's 4 factorial over 2 factorial. Now, you can use your calculator and type in 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial. But one way I want to show you, 4 factorial, remember, is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 2 times 1 is 2 factorial, which means we have a 2 factorial on top and a 2 factorial on bottom, which means they cancel. So I'm taking 4 times 3, which is 12. Yes? Yes. So, I mean, I don't know which calculator you have, but if it's a TI, they're going to be similar. If it's a Casio, it's going to be different. Okay. But I can definitely show you at the end of class on your specific calculator. But in general, if you have this one, which is the one that most of you have, I think, because it's the one the bookstore recommends, there's this PROB button, P-R-B, that means probability. And if you click that, you'll have NPR which is actually what we're doing, and I will show you how to do um, prop, uh, these permutations in your calculator as well here a little bit later. Then we have combinations, and then number three is our factorial. So if I was going to do four factorial, I would type four, prob, and then either I would go down to three, or I could just hit the number three, and that would elect the factorial button, and then you hit enter. Four factorial is 24. But you can do harder things. You can do 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial all in one line, and it will do it for you. That saves you having to type 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which isn't necessarily bad, but when you're talking about 29 factorial, that would be very tedious and not something I would want to do. But one thing, I like showing this cancellation method because come final exam day, Maybe your calculator dies, or maybe you forgot it, and you're stuck with the big old honking numbers calculator up here that doesn't actually do factorials. This is the easiest way to be able to still compute permutations that you can do mostly by hand or all by hand without having to have a factorial or a scientific calculator. So 8 factorial over 8 minus 5 factorial for finding 8 choose 5, or 8 permutations of 5. 5 permutations of 8 is a better way of saying it. Again, I'm going to write 8 times 7 times 6 times 5. This is one where it would get a little bit tedious if you're doing the hand, because our bottom is a 3 factorial, so on top you have to write it out to 3 factorial. And then, I don't know about you, but I'm not going to sit here and think in my head, okay, 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4. I'm going to use a calculator. So, sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. So, 8 prob factorial divided by 3 prob factorial. Oh, you can't see that. There you go. 6720. It does do those computations for you. And then look what happens when we have 5 choose 5. That means we have five distinct objects, and we're going to consider how many different ways we can pull all five of them out at one time. I have five people lined up in the front of the classroom. How many ways can I have all five people step forward at once? Hopefully that's a little bit of a logical thing, but algebraically it might not be. Hold on, does that make sense? Hold on a second. 5 factorial. There's five distinct people. And we're going to choose them in groups of five. Hold on, I'm thinking for a second. Oh, it's because of what we are dividing by. 
I think the way I described it was wrong. We're going to consider we have five people, and we're going to pull five out at a time. Why is there so many ways? I'm thinking. Who remembers what zero factorial is? That was a rule. Yeah, it's one. So we're allowed to do this because we're not actually dividing by zero. We're dividing by one. And five factorial is 120. Oh, because it's an arrangement. That's what I, I keep saying pick, but really it's an arrangement of five people. And that's the same thing that we just did on the front. We arranged all five of the members for a photo. There was 120 ways. Now, because I know you guys like to use your calculators, I know you're going to choose to use your calculator, obviously, over writing a lot of this out. And I have no problem with that. But I do want to caution you that you do need to understand how to use these formulas. Um, on a paper pencil test like our final exam, it's going to be important to be able to do the actual formulas. I will probably have some that specify that you have to show me the written out formula or the written out steps. So I'm going to show you the calculator method, but I caution you that you do need to still know the formulas, at least when it comes to the final exam. When it comes to the at-home exam, the chapter test, I know that you'll use your calculator. And that's totally okay. But don't get to where you don't know how to do the factorials and the cancellations or any of that. So, again, if you have a Casio, I would have to show you separately. Odds are you have a prob button or something that says probability or you have a math button that will take you to a probability subsection within your calculator. But if we are doing these permutations in our calculator, so I'm going to go back up to B which had 8p5, eight distinct objects being taken five at a time. The way you can do this in your calculator is you type the eight, so you type your first number, you go to your probability button, and then you make sure you hit the NPR. You hit as permutations. So notice it'll actually type out NPR in there. Your N was eight, your R is five. So you just hit five. 6720. It's the exact same answer. Your calculator can do permutations because it's a scientific, it's a smart calculator. So even if you are doing a longer, if you want to use the method like I did, where I wrote out all of my steps, which I did on every single one of my problems, you can always double check your answers with your calculator. Moving forward, I will probably use the calculator, but I will scan in my answer key so you can see how things cancel. Are there questions on how we're doing this? Again, if you have a different calculator, I can totally show you at the end of class how it works. Or I can try and figure it out. I can fake it. But I will find it for you. Yes? Cool. So a special note is that permutations are about arrangements. How are we ordering or arranging things? And the order matters. So the word arrangement implies an order. So we use permutations only in cases where repetitions are not allowed and where the order is important. So these are two very important notes, where repetitions are not allowed and where order is important. The way these have been talked about in our previous problems where repetitions are not allowed, the president couldn't be the secretary or the treasurer. And so there was no repetitions there. And the order is important in terms, not necessarily that we considered the president first, but that if there's somebody in this spot, there's not somebody over here, and there's not somebody over here. We're going to see it in the next example with our three-digit numbers. It says how many non-repeating, so right there, no repetitions, non-repeating three-digit numbers can be written with only the digits 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. 
And I don't know about you, but I remember for instance, point one, we did this with just the numbers one, two, and three, and we had a lot of different options. If we were allowed to repeat digits and if we weren't allowed to repeat digits, we got to see what happens. So here's how we're going to use permutations for this. We have a three-digit number. Okay, that's our R. Out of these options over here, which there's one, two, three, four, five, six of them, out of these six options, which is our total, that's our N, we're going to be pulling three of them at a time. And we get to pull three because we can't have repeating digits. I can't have the number 333. Three, three. It can't happen. That's a repeater. So I get to use a permutation on this. I'm going to take 6P3. So, again, I told you I was going to cheat and use calculator in class. 6P3. 6 choose 3. Or six arrange three, there's 120 different ways. Or 120 different numbers that are three digits that are non repeating that only consist of the numbers three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. If you like the longer method, you would cancel out the three factorial, leaving you five times three times four, which is still 120. So permutations are about no repetition and order is important. We're going to see in a minute there's another way to count called a combination that's a little bit different. All right, this has got a little bit more going on. We've got suppose a certain account, certain account numbers are to consist of two letters followed by four digits and then three more letters. Repetitions of the letters and the digits are not allowed within any of the three groups. But the last group of letters could contain one or both letters used in the first group. So what that's stating is in my first group of two letters, I cannot have AA. That cannot happen. But I could have an A in group one with my two letters, and then I could have an A in group three later. That's what that's stating. So within the little groups themselves, there's no repetition. So how many such accounts are possible? So this one has different parts to it. I can't just do a permutation like I did above where I had a three-digit number because I only had one thing to consider, and it was a three-digit number. Here, I have numbers with letters and all kinds of stuff. So I really have three parts to this one. The first part consists of two letters. So that's our first group. It has two letters. Our second group consists of four digits, or four numbers. And our third group consists of three more letters. So I can still choose permutations for this problem. I just have to do three of them because I have to look at each of my parts separately as their own permutation. So when I'm dealing with letters, it didn't tell me any restrictions on these letters. All of my letters are available. Um, I guess we should specify that it is the English alphabet. So how many letters are in the English alphabet? 26. So that's our N. That's the total number I get to choose from is 26. Then I would have my P because I'm considering the number of permutations of 26 things taken how many at a time? Two, because there's two letters. And we can't have repeats. So if A is in the first spot, then it can't be in the second spot. So this is going to be the 26 P2. Now, I'm going to set up all of mine before I do my calculations, just so I can just pull out the calculator and number crunch the rest. For our second category, our second group, if you would, we can have four numbers. So then the question is, what is our total number of possibilities for our numbers? Yeah, it's 10. 
because we have the numbers 1 through 9, so there's 9 options, but then you can also have the number 0, which makes us have 10 numbers we can choose from. So we're going to take 10 distinct numbers and look at them how many at a time? 4, because we can't have repeats. If we only look at them one at a time, like we did back in like 10-1, then we could have 10 different options each time because we could have repeats. But in this case, we can't. And then for our last one, it looks very similar to our first. We have 26 options, but we're going to take them three at a time. So we're going to take 26 probability. This is one you definitely don't or probability, yeah, the prob button. Like it gets really big, really fast. So 26, probability button, sorry, there you go. NPR, two, we're gonna take them two at a time. 650. That means there's 650 different arrangements of our alphabet letters when we take two at a time, so quite a few. And then, I'm actually going to jump down to the third one because look, when you highlight something, you can hit enter and it's going to pull it up again and then you can move your cursor over. And since our third group is 26 NPR 3, I can just replace my 2 with a 3. And it saves me having to dip stuff in again. So this bottom one, there's 15,600 different ways. Pretty crazy. Then I can do 10 probability button NPR we're going to take them four at a time. Okay, so we've done all this calculation, which is great. It told us the different arrangements of our letters taken two at a time, or our numbers taken four at a time, or our letters taken three at a time. But that doesn't tell me the whole shebang on how many different account numbers we could actually can make up using all of this. In order to find that out, we take the 650, which was the number of permutations for the first part. We multiply that by 5040, which was the number of permutations we can get for the second. And we multiply that by the 15,600, which is the number of permutations we can get for the third set. And your calculator is going to go crazy. 650 times 5040 times 15600 and you get this if you have this calculator. My screen does not have enough units to show. 5.11056 times 10 to the 10th. So what that means is I would move this decimal to the right 10 times. So I'd go one, two, three, four, five, and then I'd have five zeros. So it'd be five, one, one, zero, five, six, one, two, three, four, five. Which means they could have, that's thousands, millions, billions, 51 billion different accounts. These are why your accounts are so interestingly laid out sometimes. It's why our passwords have to be changed every year or six months and you have to contain two letters and two numbers and a capital and a shape and all kinds of stuff. And it's a bit tedious for us to remember, but it's because of stuff like this. It makes it harder for people to hack you. When there's that many possibilities, it makes it a lot harder to be found out. So there's a lot of different accounts that can happen there. Do we have questions on how these permutations work? Or how you use your calculator outside of if you have a different one than what I'm showing you how to type it in type thing. Okay. So let's switch gears a tiny bit and think about combinations. When we think about, oh, go ahead. Um, whenever we're doing a piercing, are we going to, for that last part of it, are we going to enter it with the four 
So I never got an answer that was that big when I did the homework in Pearson. So you shouldn't have anything like that. I think the biggest item that I had got up into $7 billion, and your calculator can do that. It didn't give you the times 10 to the 10. So I never encountered that. I don't think you will either because I did all the homework to see if that would happen and how Pearson would like it. And I think you'll be okay. Um, safety, my, my guess would be that writing it out with not the times 10 to the 10th would be the best option if you had that, which is why I went ahead and drug it over. Um, but like I said, I didn't encounter that, so I don't think you guys will either. Okay, so when we start talking about combinations, it's a little bit different. We're going to think about this in terms of sets and subsets a little bit. So permutations were, how do we arrange this? How do we lay these out in a specific order? The order mattered with our permutations. With combinations, the order is not going to matter. It's just how many can we choose when we choose this number of things. So combinations are really like take, uh, excuse me, thinking of subsets of a set. Repetitions are still not allowed, but the order also doesn't matter. So up here when I had people lined up, the order of the person mattered. Where they stood mattered. And when I pulled them forward, their position still mattered. Here, it's more like drawing balls out of a bag. So I have five balls in the bag, and if I choose three of them, you know, what do I have? The order doesn't matter. I'm just picking. And so these are more like subsets. So going back to our group, because we like to use the same group 10,000 times in this chapter, we have group N, club N, consisting of A, B, C, D, E, that contains three members or elements. So we want to make a subset and we're going to start without using combinations. We're just going to go back old school like it's 10.1. I need to list, it specifically says list, all of the subsets of N that contain three members. So I'm going to try and be systematic if I can so I don't forget any. I'm going to start with the first three. I could have a subset of ABC. Notice I can't have a subset of AAA because I can't, you know, clone Alan, I think his name was. He can only come up once. I could have a subset of ABD. I could have a subset of ABE. And then I could have a subset of ACD, of ACE have a subset of A, D, E. Notice I didn't write I could have a subset of A, C, B because A, C, B is the same people up here as A, B, C. The order doesn't matter, so I'm not going to relist subgroups because I've already listed the subset that contained those three people. That's the difference between these, between combinations and permutations. All right, so those are all the ones with A listed first. So now I'm going to pop over here and do B, C, D, B, C, E, B, D, E. Then I'm going to go list C first, C, D, E. If I list D first, there's nothing else for me to list that I haven't already listed. D's already paired up with everybody. D can be paired up with same thing for E. So we found 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 10 subsets or 10 possibilities of making subgroups or subcommittees of our club. So what I had was I started with five members, and I'm randomly choosing three to make these various subgroups. 
and there was a total of 10 different possibilities that come up. That's really what a combination is. Combinations are when there are n number of things available and we're choosing r of them. So the factorial equation is actually really similar to the last one. And that's because what we do is we take our permutation equation and we're dividing it by r factorial. So the only thing that happens is we take our permutation equation and we put an r factorial down in the bottom that's multiplying against that n minus r factorial. And that's going to tell us the number of combinations or the number of subsets of indistinct things if we take them r at a time. Notice r is less than n. Hopefully that makes sense. I can't have a bag of balls, or even going back up here to the group, I can't have a group made up of five people and make a subset that has six people in it. That doesn't make any sense. I don't have six people, I have five people. So combinations, the distinction between combinations and permutations, there's still no repeats, but the order doesn't matter. Order matters for permutations. That's why it's known as an arrangement. Arrangement means order. Combination does not mean order. So the first one, I'm going to show you the long way. And then for the second one, I'm going to show you using the calculator. So I have 9 choose 7. There's nine total distinct objects, but I'm going to consider how many different ways or combinations I can, or subsets of seven items I can have from that. So using my factorial equation, n would be nine and r would be seven. So if I have n factorial on top, that'd be nine factorial over. I have r factorial, which I wrote r, but I meant to write seven factorial. And then you'd have n minus r, which would be 9 minus 7, inside your parentheses with a factorial on the outside. So on the bottom, I have 7 factorial, and then 9 minus 7 is 2 factorial. On top, 9 factorial is 9 times 8 times 7 factorial. Notice the 7 factorials cancel. I could even go one step further if I wanted, because what's 2 factorial? It's 2, because 2 factorial is 2 times 1. Well, 8 is divisible by 2, meaning I'm taking 9 times 4, which means there's 36 different subsets or combinations that I could make. And when I have a set of 9 items to get started with, and I'm pulling 7 out at a time. All of this minus the 7 factorial right here, this part is our permutation. And then we just added to our permutation this r factorial. For b, we have 24 items. And we're going to think about how many subsets can we make when we pull 18 of them out at a time. So numbers are a little bit bigger. That's okay. I'm going to use a calculator because I'm going to show you how you can do combinations on your calculator. If you can do permutations, you can do combinations. And the way that we did our permutation is the same way we're going to do our combination, meaning we have to list our n first. So our n in this case is 24. So on my calculator, I'm going to type in 24. I'm going to go back up to my probability button, prob. And then notice the second thing listed is NCR. That's our combinations. So either go down and click on it or hit the number 2. And notice now it says NCR. So the only thing left I need to enter is the R, which is how many we're taking at a time. In this case, it's 18. So now I type 18, hit Enter. There's a lot of different ways. 
One, three, four, five, nine, six. 134,596 different subsets. Aren't you glad that I'm not making a list of all those out? I think I could probably assign that at the beginning of the semester and we'd still be working on it. That would be exhausting. If you're interested, I did do it on paper using the factorial equation. And I wrote it out the long way so that I could cancel out my 18 factorial. Got my big numbers, did my division, still got the exact same answer as my calculator. Yes? So I haven't actually made it yet, but if I do a final one, it'll be something like A where I, I will expect you to write this, show the canceling, and then you're good. Okay. And I will make sure that on the answer key to the final exam, it has everything written out exactly the way that you should present it on the final so okay. that you're not left to question what's, what's there. Yes? This? Okay, so what's your question? Sorry, reword it. Oh, list the subsets. Oh, so we're up here. Um, let me double check something. So this one is just reminding us how to do subsets. This is using the fundamental counting principle and just the listing. So we wouldn't use combinations or permutations on this okay. problem. Okay. Yeah. That's what I was confused. I was like, is that something? Okay. No. So we would not. Although I think we can. I think we can use combinations. Because there's five total people in the group, right? So that's always the N, is the total number of people. And then we're considering this by taking three members at a time. And the order doesn't matter, because here's the deal. The subgroup ABC is the same subgroup as BAC. It still has the same people in it, right? So the order doesn't matter. So this means it's a combination. And if you do that, we're taking three at a time, notice we get 10. Same thing. It's just for this one, we couldn't use combination simply because it said list. So they actually wanted us to list out every element, but we are using a combination here. This one's different than what we did back here because president, secretary, treasurer, the order mattered a little bit more here. So we had to use permutations here, whereas over here we're allowed to use combinations. And I will say, to be honest, that's going to be the hardest thing as you do the homework, is trying to determine if you're using a combination or a permutation. And I made a table, or I found a table, that I think helps give you some clues as to which one you'll use when. Did that help at all? Yes. Okay. So I'm going to skip these two examples real quick just to point out the table, because I think the table does help. There's two different columns. We have our permutation column and our combination column. Regardless of which one, we are taking a number of ways of selecting our items out of N. That's true for permutations or combinations. Repetitions are not allowed. That's true for permutations and combinations. Here's where they're different. Order is important with permutations, but order is not important with combinations. Here we're going to think of arrangements, and here we're going to think of subsets. And then they do go ahead and list out the formulas as well. And then they give you some key words to look for. If your word asks you for how many different arrangements or what is the order, or if you're lining people up, those are good things to think about. Okay, that's going to be a permutation question. If it's talking about subsets or groups, samples, selections, choosing, um, although choosing, I will say, sometimes we, we use that in both because that's just our English. 
But these are often good questions or good words to look for that are going to help you know to use a combination of verb or mutation. But the big, big one is, does the order matter? Ask yourself that pretty much from the get-go. Does the order of these objects matter in this problem? Batting order, that matters. Um, license. Do what? I'm assuming we don't with the test. On the test, do you get the table? If you write it down on your cheat sheet. Okay. <laughs> so, yes and no. Kind of depends on you. Um, most of your card problems, those are combinations because you can have a hooker hand of, you know, two, three, four, five, and six. And while obviously in your hand you're going to list them in that order, the order that you draw the cards out of your hand doesn't matter. And so that's going to be a combination, not a permutation. I'm trying to think of other big ones to look for. Batting order was a permutation because it does matter. The order. I am not a baseball person, but I know the way that you line up your batting order is very important. Uh, I just don't know why, because I don't follow baseball. Any of you baseball people could probably tell me why. I know you want to put your, don't you want to put your good hitters at the front? And then you have like a, a ringer you put in somewhere if you accidentally have three on base or, I can talk math, I can't talk baseball. So this table is helpful. There's also a note down here because just because we're in permutations and combinations doesn't mean we can't use our fundamental counting principle. In the cases where our items are selected from in items and repetitions are allowed, so like a license plate number or um, if they tell you that for an account number you can have repetitions or making three-digit numbers with repetitions, then you're going to use your fundamental counting principle and not either of these options. So don't forget that just because we're now in permutations and combinations. We can still use our fundamental counting principle and it's still helpful. Okay, let's go back up to our examples. I just like that table. I think it's helpful. All right, we're going to do a card one. I like the card problems. A common form of poker involves hands of five cards that are dealt from a standard deck of consisting of 52 cards. So how many different five card hands are possible when you play poker? So you can't have repeats. I can't have two ace of diamonds in my hand. So we know it's either a permutation or a combination. And then in this case, it's not even an order. I'm not arranging my cards. I'm just choosing five cards at random from the deck to make a possible hand. And so I'm going to be using combinations. How many do I start with? How many items am I starting with? What's my N? 52, yeah, it's a 52 card deck. So 52 combination, and I'm choosing five cards at a time, so my R would be five. Definitely not one that is super helpful to do by hand. You can. I did do it by hand. It just, you have to write quite a bit out because we go down to 47 factorial. 52 probability combination, five at a time. Ooh, and we get a nice big number. Two, five, nine, eight, nine, six, zero. There are two million five hundred and ninety eight thousand nine hundred and sixty different possible poker hands. That is quite a few. Some of your problems will ask you, um, how many different ways are there to get three face cards in your hand or to get all diamonds in your hand and things like that. And they'll give you all of the stats for that, that there's 13 of each suit and things of that nature. Questions on that one? Okay. Carrie would like to buy 10 different paintings, but she can only afford four. 
So in how many ways can she make her selections? The order of the paintings does not matter. She simply has ten in front of her and she gets to pick four. So how many different ways can she make her selections or make her subgroups? So she starts with ten. She's going to choose four. So we're doing ten C four. So ten prob C four. She has 210 different ways she can make her selections. In case you've ever wondered why it's so hard sometimes when you're standing at Target or standing in front of a clothing rack to actually make your selections. Because there's actually a ton of different things to take into account. All right, before we move on to the last problem, are there any questions or anything that needs to be clarified or cleared up outside of how do you type it into your calculator? All right, we're going to go back to Club N one more time. Since we use Club N so often, I have a feeling I will probably use it on the final just because you've seen it so many times. This one's very similar to what we started with, but now they're going to have a limitation. It says, how many different three-member committees could Club N have so that exactly one woman is on the committee? And then they give you who's the women. In this case, Kathy is a woman and Evelyn is a woman. So we need how many different subcommittees could be formed so that either Kathy or Evelyn are on the committee. But we can't have both because it says exactly one. So we're going to take this in two different parts. When the club, or excuse me, when the committee is this small or when the club is this small, listing it's not a bad option and that may be the way that you choose to go. Um, but it's still nice to see the process when the committees are smaller so that if you had a committee or you're looking at a graduating class and they're picking something different and you're dealing with larger numbers, you're not lost on how to do that. Honestly, I would probably go a listing route for this, but I'm going to show you choosing um, using combinations in this. So two parts. The first part, we have to choose a woman on our committee. We have to have a woman. We have to have exactly one woman. So if we look at our group, there's only two women to pick from, right? So two is going to be our N in this case, because there's only two of them. And out of those two, we have to choose one. So it's two, choose one. You'll learn quickly that anything, choose one, is just whatever it was. There's two different ways we could pick a woman. Because either we can pick Kathy or we can pick Evelyn. That's it. Those are our two options for the women on our subcommittee. we got to pick one of them, so there's two options. The second part, though, for this is we have to choose the remaining members. Or in this case, we have to pick two men. We can't pick the woman we didn't just pick because it says exactly one. So it's not at least one woman on our committee. It's exactly one woman on our committee and two men. So out of our group, out of our club, there are a total of three men. Alan, Bill, and David. So we have three and we need to choose two of them. We have three. We're going to choose two. There's three different ways we can do that. So there's two different ways we can pick the woman that's going to be on our committee. There's three different ways we could pick the men that are going to be on our committee. So if we're trying to pick a three-member subcommittee or committee for this club, then two times three will give us six ways to make our selections. Let's see. 
C or E. And we could go back and we could actually look out of our 10 possibilities which ones have C or E and we could figure that out as well. So listing's not bad, but we can also do it a two-part step where we choose our woman first, then we choose our two men. We find out that there are six possible different subcommittees or committees in this case that we could make from our group.